Welcome back to episode five of Project X, where we're taking you on a journey with us to find private label product opportunities, teaching you along the way so you can build your own businesses using these same simple methods. So last episode, we talked about a little known method that can help you determine how competitive a keyword is and how much demand there is for that keyword. We also talked about what is a test listing and how to set it up. And that's something that maybe you've never heard before. I've taken different courses on Amazon before. I never heard about this method that Tim showed us last episode about setting up test listings. We also talked about how to make a decision without taking huge risks in cost and time. So if you haven't watched that episode yet, make sure to go back and check it out first. Now on today's episode, what are we gonna go over? The first one is how to find out if your listing is indexing for the keywords that it's supposed to, super important. We're then gonna show you how to set up a pay-per-click test campaign. We're gonna show you how to run that, how to ship stuff in. We're gonna show you then how to analyze that data after we've compiled it and that listing's run for a little while. And then we're gonna show you how we take that data to determine exactly which products that we're going to launch. Thanks, Tim. I'm your host, Bradley Sutton from Helium 10, and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Tim Jordan from the Private Label Legion. Welcome to Project X. If you'd like a written in-depth version of this episode, make sure to go to helium10.com forward slash X5. That's helium10.com forward slash X5. So a quick question before we get started, we'd like you to comment below. Um, we're talking today about PPC, pay-per-click, Amazon advertising. So for those of you who are already selling on Amazon, what is your strategy? Do you do broad campaigns? Do you do a lot of phrase campaigns? Do you do manual campaigns? Do you target ASINs? Guys, if you don't know anything of what we just said, guess what? The next few episodes, you're gonna learn a lot about that. But those of you who did understand that question, let us know below, what is your strategy? Now, at the end of last episode, if you remember, Tim actually shot some pictures of the egg tray with his phone. And off screen, we went ahead and updated those images to the listing. Let's take a look at it here. We are in Manage Inventory, and we're gonna go to the listing right here. Uh, by the way, if you notice here, now all of a sudden, there is two listings right here. So what I have to do is I actually had to make a Fulfilled by Merchant listing. Now, can you explain to them why I had to do that? Yeah, this is just kind of for the test purposes. We created a, a Fulfilled by Merchant listing, letting Amazon know, hey, we have inventory. And what that does is it allows them to upload the pictures and start making these indexing connections, which is what we're gonna talk about now. So just keep in mind that this is more for illustrative purposes. It doesn't mean that we're telling you to run Fulfilled by Merchant listings. Absolutely not for these tests, we're gonna run FBA, but we had to set it up now to start getting that information for you. Mm. Okay, so right here, what I did to get to this page, for those of you who aren't brand new, I went here into inventory, and then I hit manage inventory and it's gonna show those products that uh, we created. So if I wanna actually see it live in Amazon, you know, it's kind of hard to find it in Amazon. So what you do is you go here to the column product name and I'm just gonna click the product title right here and it's gonna open it up in Amazon. So you could take a look at just with a, what do you have, an iPhone there? Is that what you have? It's an Android, but. An Android, well, I won't hold that against you. But here we have an Android phone pictures. It looks great. Yeah, and keep in mind, this is a very, very simple listing. So remember, we talked about this last episode. Do not take this as an example of a fully optimized listing. The point is for it not to be fully optimized. Remember in our tests, we don't wanna overly sell the product, so the price is high. If you look at the Helium 10 evaluation, it's a 4.3 out of 10. This is perfect. This is all we need to get started. So again, there's two different types of listings that we build, the test listing and then our actual listing. So keep in mind, this is just the test listings. But what we're doing now is we're showing you that Amazon is showing this is available. Now, there's really no risk of selling this because the price is too high and, and we're not really doing anything yet, right? So it's just kind of hanging out there in the universe, but this will allow us to check indexing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Helium 10 tool index checker. Mm -hmm. And what that's gonna do is make sure that those keywords that we picked out on the last episode, you guys remember the keyword list? If you don't, we're about to show you. We're gonna make sure that all of those keywords are essentially attached to this ASIN or to this product listing. And then we're going to turn around and set up those PPC campaigns. So Bradley, if you would, let's uh, let's go into Index Checker and show everybody how that works. Okay, now first, I'll, I'll, as I we just started filming, I was kind of worried. I was like, oh no, I don't remember by memory the 10 keywords or so that we had picked. But 
thanks to Helium 10, I went to Scribbles. You remember, Scribbles is the program that we used last week in order to kind of like uh, optimize our listing. That's not really optimized because it, just like Tim said, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be fully optimized. I just used Scribbles in order to know, hey, this is where I'm going to put my bullet points. This is where I'm going to put my description. And the cool thing about Scribbles is it actually saves all your work. So I just pulled it up right now from history. And so here were the keywords that we had uh, targeted to put in the listing. So I want to know now, is it index? So I'm just going to copy these keywords. These are the ones that we're going to be testing, some of them that we're going to be testing in our PPC test. And now I'm going to open up the Helium 10 tool index checker. Now, indexing you know, might be a foreign concept you know, to you. And actually, I believe one of the first ones to use indexing in, in, in the Amazon world was Manny Coates, the president of Helium 10 a few years ago. But if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense to use this term. So when you think about it in a book, right, there's an index and there's a list of words and then there's numbers there. So like, how does an index work in a book? Yeah, well, Amazon needs to know how to direct people to a certain product. So they make the connections. This is basically the glossary or the index, of course, to which keywords attach this. So if I type in Nike shoe, then I shouldn't get a listing for a laptop computer because the index, the index of Nike shoe does not connect to this listing for a laptop computer. So you, you kind of understand why this is so important. If the indexing is not correct, mm -hmm. then Amazon will actually shut down our PPC campaigns because if I have a laptop computer and I'm running a pay-per-click ad for Nike shoe, Amazon's gonna say, no, that's not uh, applicable, it's not appropriate, it's not indexing, and they'll shut that down. So that's why this is so important to check our indexing. And another easier way to think of this is if it's indexed, it's searchable. So basically, if Nike shoes is not indexed for that laptop computer listing, it means that no matter how many times somebody types in Nike shoes, it would literally be impossible for that laptop computer listing to ever come up because it's not searchable, not indexed. All right. So right now, I'm going to paste those keywords into here. I need to get the ASIN. The ASIN we can get right here from our Seller Central account under product name right here under the title. I'm going to copy the ASIN. And right here, you see something that says seller ID optional. This uh, I'm not going to do. I, I only just want to see if this is indexed. This is like another higher level of indexing that is not really applicable right here. So I'm just going to do our main index check. So here I've got all these characters in here. I'm going to do check keywords and it is letting us know. And look at that. All right, so what you're looking at in the index checker results, what you want to see is the cumulative. Notice how all of these have an X. That's because I didn't enter that storefront ID. So the fact that this is checkmark on every single one means what? Tim? It means that our keywords are being connected to this listing, which means that we have done something right, and now we can move on to building out our PPC test campaigns. Absolutely. So now for our next step, what we want to do is we're going to go up here to advertising and campaign manager, right? Correct. All right, what am I looking at here? Yeah, what we're looking at is obviously Amazon's uh, options and kind of giving you some information. So we're gonna hit start advertising now. This is a brand new account we set up. So we're literally walking you through brand new settings. Well, that's cool. You get $50 in free clicks when you start. So there we go. We're not even going to have to pay for this, uh, a lot of this uh, PPC campaign right now. All right, so now we're on the create campaign. So do you have a, like a naming pattern you usually do? Uh, just course? something simple. So we'll just put this egg tray test. Egg tray test. All right. Okay, to, do we want to put an end date here? Uh, no, we'll just keep it running. Okay. Daily budget. So daily budget, here's the thing. If we're running an actual campaign and we have a budget, then we want Amazon to turn the ads off when we reach that budget. But remember, we're buying information here. So we're going to basically tell Amazon that we'll spend a lot of money to, uh, to actually test this. So for these, maybe a daily budget of 40 or $50. I don't think we'll hit that. We shouldn't come anywhere near close to that. But remember, if we underbid, then we don't get that information. And then it gives us the option of automatic targeting or manual targeting. Automatic targeting is basically telling Amazon, hey, you run the show. You try to run as many keywords and as many locations you can to get some traction or traffic or conversions or sales here. But we're not going to do that because we want to have all the control. So we're going to actually go to manual targeting and set up a manual campaign. Keep in mind, too, on that daily budget, if you're going to put something higher or if you can't afford $50, while there's a 95% chance that's not going to be used up, 
something could happen, like somebody could share your product on, on Etsy or Pinterest and it goes viral, right? So if, you, if, you're, if you're putting a number in there that you, prob- that you don't think you can afford, if it goes on three, four, five days, make sure you're checking this daily to see what, what's going on. So manual targeting, all right? Uh, now it looks like the next section here is create an ad group. Ad group, that's just something internal for us, so we're gonna call it test campaigns. Okay. And that will clump all of our different campaigns into a certain group. All right. Now, in this screen, it's gonna list which things that we can run offers on or run PPC campaigns on. Um, little things like the no image available, that's fine. That's just where Amazon's not pulling the data, but it doesn't really matter. Now, keep in mind here that we had two offers mm-hmm. for this same product. Remember, we set up a fulfilled by merchant and then we set up a fulfilled by Amazon. We're actually sending our products into Amazon in the next couple of days. So we're gonna go ahead and set this listing up for the bottom SKU, which is the FBA listing. We don't wanna run an ad on our current Fulfilled by Merchant listing. We only did that to check our indexing. All right, so I got that set up. Now it looks like the next section here is bidding. Campaign bidding strategy. So bidding strategies uh, are very in-depth. We'll talk a lot more about the options in our later episodes, but for right now, We want everything very stationary. We don't want things changing. We want all of the parameters set and locked in so that way we're getting kind of apples to apples comparison across different keywords, across a different amount of time, different number of days. So we're gonna do the simplest, which is fixed bids. All right, fixed bids. Next, we've got default. Now, default bid is interesting. Default bid is what Amazon is suggesting that we bid based on the keywords that we're indexing for. So Amazon, in theory, is going back and finding what other people are having to pay or what, you know, what the price is per keyword. Do not trust this. There are some people that teach you can check competitiveness based on these numbers. When we actually analyze this campaign, we'll show you how off that can be. So they're suggesting that our click can be anywhere as low as 14 cents, which is probably unreasonable, to $1.23, which who actually knows? We're going to find this out ourselves. So let's, let's talk theory for a second. If we leave our default bid at 75 cents, Mm -hmm. the problem is if somebody else is bidding up to 80 cents, remember it's a bid system, kind of like, you know, an auction, whoever bids the most, you know, well, we'll get the placement. So if somebody else is willing to bid 80 cents and we're at 75, then our ad doesn't show up, Mm -hmm. which means we're not getting the impressions. And in this test, impressions are one of the most important numbers that we have to have. So we need to be extremely careful that we don't underbid. Now, if Amazon is saying $1.23, most of our tests, you know, are probably in the 80 cents to, you know, maybe $1.50, $1.60 range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's bid up to $3. So let's change this number right here to $3. It doesn't mean that we'll likely pay $3, but if someone is willing to bid $2, we need to know that because that's going to tell us how competitive these listings are, right? So again, this is very different than what we do on our actual operational PPC listings. This is extremely, extremely different. And this is extremely, extremely important to pay attention to. We're going to bid high on this. And keep in mind too, it's not just will the ad show or not. I mean, sometimes it will show still, even if somebody beat us on the bid, but they're gonna be like right there at the very top and they might have relegated us to like page two or three or towards the bottom of the page. So we're not gonna get as much information. We really want to make sure that we're showing up right there on the top of these uh, sponsored results. Um, what, what about adjust bids by placement? Does that, do we need to do anything? Yeah, anymore? we're not going to do anything with that okay. right now. <clears throat> now it looks like the next category here is targeting. And I'm assuming that we're going to want to stick and do keyword targeting for this campaign, right? That's what we've been living in is keywords. Yep. So, all right. So now speak of the devil, speaking of keywords right here, here, Amazon is suggesting some keywords. And actually in this one, you know, some of them are, com- are way off. Uh, it's funny how it says chicken coop chicken, probably because of our brand name of Guy's Chicken Coop, right? (laughs) (laughs) So it it already indexed our brand name, which we didn't even uh, realize. Um, And a a lot of times you're gonna have just some like ridiculous things by Amazon. So don't always just assume that, hey, this information is coming from Amazon. You know, so many people are like, I only wanna know what Amazon wants because Amazon is the smartest algorithm in the world, right? And they just focus on that. But if you do that, you're gonna end up uh, advertising for words like no chicken. So if someone types in not <laughs> no chicken because they might be looking for a specific dietary restricted canned dog food, right? Yeah. And they say 
Can dog food with no chicken? We don't want our ad popping up. Completely irrelevant. It's going to give us information that is not accurate for what we're doing. So we're actually going to go to this other tab, which is enter keywords. And you guys guessed it. We're going to, you're supposed to say enter keywords. Okay. Enter so keywords. Enter keywords. All right. So match type. <laughs> this is interesting. This is where Amazon wants us to give them a little bit of the reins and a little bit of control to make some adjustments. Okay. So if we're specifically checking the keyword wooden egg tray, I want to know exactly how many people type in that exact phrase because we're going to check wooden egg tray, egg tray wood, right? We're going to check these very specifics. If we let them do it in this broad manner, they're going to flip those around and compile them and mix and match, which might be okay if we were actually trying to sell it. But remember, we only want information on specific keywords. So we are not going to do a broad match type. We're going to do an exact all right, so what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go back to Scribbles or wherever I had written down those uh, keywords here. I just happen to have it in Scribbles. I'm going to copy it from here and we're going to go back to our campaign and I'm going to paste them. You have to put it one per line right here. Yep, no commas, nothing side by side. It's all got to be uh, vertically centered like this. Yep, and then the next step is we're going to go ahead and add these keywords. Okay, now it adds it down here below. There's nine of them. And now notice how, you know, we got the match type right here. We got the keyword on the left. Now, again, Amazon is giving us a suggestion. So how much do I take this suggestion, if at all? I wouldn't take this at all. And I think that when we analyze this, we'll see that some things were way off. Um, wooden egg tray, they're saying, you know, between 36 and 49 cents a bid. I suspect this will be higher. We'll see how close I am. There are some things like egg tray, 44 to 99 cents. Remember, egg tray is very broad. There's a lot of people indexing and selling on egg tray. I think it's going to be much higher than that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of a lot of variables here. There's also a couple things that they're not giving a suggestion. And what that probably indicates is not necessarily that people aren't searching for it, but people aren't indexing for those. So rustic egg tray, I suspect that we'll have some impressions on rustic egg tray. It might be low, but people are still looking for it. So all that means is Amazon doesn't really have a recommendation for us. So again, you know, they want us to apply, you know, their suggested bids. We're not going to do any of that. We set a predetermined keyword bid amount at $3, which as you see, you know, goes all the way down and applies all of those uh, manually. So I think that we're on the right track. We're just going to leave that at, leave $3, at $3 a bid. All right. Yep. All right. So now, um, again, I, we're not going to do this right here, but negative keywords. Well, usually this is like, let's say, our keyword is egg tray, right? Like if we were doing one of those phrase or broad campaigns, what that means basically is that now Amazon can take egg tray and say, if it was broad, say egg trays or egg trays for men, plastic egg trays for egg women. Tray. Plastic egg tray. So, so that's so, a good one. Yeah. Plastic egg trays. Like potentially in a broad campaign or a phrase campaign, they could advertise our product for plastic egg trays. Now we're not doing that here. We're doing an exact, but if we had done a broader phrase, that's what we would have put here because maybe we're like, hey, we don't want to show up for baby egg trays or, yeah. or, or something like that. So that's what we would have put here. So long story short, I think we could ignore this because we're already so mm -hmm. tactical and so specific in our keyword selection here. Uh, for the test, we're going to go ahead and skip that. And that's basically it. So I think we just hit launch campaign. Let's do it. All right, so our campaign is ready to run. All that has to happen now, because remember, we only turned the campaign on for the FBA listing, mm -hmm. is I'm going to go back to the warehouse. I'm going to get our test products, the coffin shelves, the forest axes, the egg trays. We're going to send all of those in. We're going to basically duplicate this for the other two products so that we have three test listings running. And we'll actually come back at the end of this episode and show you basically the analysis of that. So I'm going to go back and ship things in. We're also going to talk about suppression which basically means we're going to take the listing offline after we ship our products in. So I'm going to go back to the warehouse. We're going to ship in our egg trays. We're also going to duplicate this whole process basically for the coffin boxes and the axes. And we'll set all those up and get those running. And then we're going to intentionally suppress our listings. So to make this listing active, remember we even set up a fulfilled by merchant listing. We had to do that to turn the campaigns on and get those ready. But here's the problem. If this little box is my warehouse and I'm setting up 30 test units to send in, 
and I'm sending those into a fulfillment center, and we'll show you this, with Amazon, and Amazon receives those. Well, if Amazon is offering these to Prime customers, so free two-day shipping, they want to distribute my 30 units kind of scattered all over the country. So they're going to take those and they're going to send them to a bunch of fulfillment centers all over the place. They might send five here, five here, five here, five here, five here, five here. And this might be New York and this might be California and this might be St. Louis and this might be Detroit all over the place. Well, what happens is these are different numbers. This might be five units. This might be 10 units. This might be three units. This might be two units. They're going to spread these out and these ship at different speeds. So if it takes, let's say, you know, shipping parcel four days to get to Amazon's fulfillment center, and they take, you know, three or four days to process these, well, it might only take them two days to ship to this center, and it might take them, you know, six days here, and then this center might take longer to, or to receive than this will. So what that means is, if these two units show up really fast, our FBA listing will become active. And what's that mean? That means that advertising campaign will become active and we'll start selling things. Well, what if those two sell really fast? And then it's another three days before they become active here and then the ad comes back on. And then maybe those sell out or, or you know, there's all sorts of scenarios where we're going to get this ad that turns on and off, on and off. And we're gonna show you in the analysis period of this episode where we're actually looking for consistent data. So if I run a report of impressions over a five day period, I want to know exactly how many times my ad popped up. If in that five day period, we had inventory moving and the ad was coming on and off, on and off, on and off, and say in that five day period, the listing was only active and the ad was only active 50% of the time, we're gonna get screwed up impression numbers. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. So what we want Amazon to do is we want Amazon to ship all of our products. So if we have 30 units, right, that we're shipping, we want them to ship all 30 of these products and get them all settled and figured out where they go and get them all ready. But essentially what we wanna see is that all 30 units or however many test units you send in are available for purchase. We don't wanna see FC transfer, we don't wanna see inbound. Now, the way to get Amazon to ship these products but turn your listing off mm -hmm. is called intentional suppression. And it's actually something that uh, me and my business partners kind of invented because we ran into this problem where things would start selling before we wanted them to. So we can't close the listing because if we close the listing, Amazon could stop shipping these items and distributing them. Then we have a problem. So what we're actually going to do is after I ship these items in, I'm going to call Bradley and Bradley's going to remove the first and primary picture from this listing. All right. So he's literally just going to remove that picture. Now, what's that do? Amazon says, oh, there's a problem with this listing. Let's suspend the listing or let's suppress the listing, not suspend it. And that means that it's not searchable anymore. And that's actually what I had to do today. Off camera, we did that because originally, remember last episode, we only uploaded the listing itself. We didn't take any of those pictures. We took the pictures at the end of the episode. So when I went in there to check out the listing, it's actually said suppress. And that's because uh, until today, we hadn't actually put those images on the listing. I uploaded those images to the listing and then an hour later, it became unsuppressed and searchable. So this whole process, you know, that we're talking about, because another thing that we didn't even say is when you send the inventory in, it can actually go to three different places, even though you're only sending like 20 or 30, it could, it doesn't all go to one Amazon, even at the beginning. So like it could actually go to three different Amazon places. And then from here, it has to go to all these places. So this whole process could take between a week and two to three weeks, you know, forward. Now, are we going to show, um, should we screen share once you're actually going to send this product in just so they can see how to set up an FBA shipment? Yeah, we're going to walk you through in just a few minutes how I send those shipments in from the warehouse. And uh, we'll go deeper into that in a different episode, but I'll show you kind of the basics of just shipping in these test items. We'll probably do a case quantity so it'll be easy. And then once all of our units are distributed everywhere, I'm going to call Bradley. Bradley's going to take that number mm -hmm. one picture and put it back in the listing. And within moments, Amazon should say, okay, the problems are corrected. Let's turn this listing on, which means let's turn the ads on. And from that period to wherever we determine to stop, we should have very uniform data on impressions, cost per click, and the other columns that are gonna be important to us in that advertising report until we either stop the listing, which a lot of times we won't sell a lot of products. Remember, we're not trying to, or sometimes it sells out even at a ridiculous price point with a really, really crummy listing. So what we're gonna do is 
Um, I'll go to the warehouse. I'll get these things shipped in. We'll take care of suppressing that listing. Mm -hmm. We're going to run these ads for a certain period of time, and then we'll come back and analyze all of that just for you. All right, so we're here in the prep room. We're going to send in our test shipment of egg trays like we talked about. Now, I'm going to keep this very short and abbreviated. We're going to get more into shipping and logistics in a later episode, but I just want to show you how simple this is, okay? So we've got our egg trays here that we talked about. I've got about 15 of these items, and we have to prep those somehow, right? And on our test orders, we don't want to do a whole lot of like fancy custom boxes because it's expensive and we might have to buy a lot of them and it takes time. So for a product like this, this is pretty durable. So we can package them pretty simply. And remember, the buyer experience doesn't have to be great because really there's probably not going to be any purchases or very few because remember, we're going to price it high and we're intentionally not going to optimize this listing. We just want to run PPC. So I took some of these and I put one in an OPP bag and an OPP bag is just a plastic bag. We just keep a bunch of those loose around here. That's what it looks like. It's got a suffocation warning on it, which we have to have. It's a large bag. And again, this is not pretty, but that's okay. We're moving fast. We're moving agile. We're just getting information. So I put this thing in a bag, wrapped around, taped it. And that's basically all we need. So when I go in here to my Amazon Seller Central page, as you can see, remember we had a fulfilled by merchant listing. We've also got an FBA listing. We're sending into the FBA listing, okay? So I'm gonna click here. You see it says out of stock. Of course, we haven't shipped any in. And I'm going to hit send replenish inventory. Now, make sure that your ship from address is accurate. Otherwise, they won't know where to come pick this thing up at. Uh, we've got an option for sending in individual products or case pack products. Now, if I told Amazon I had 15 individual products, they might have me ship one to 15 different places. That's a big pain. So I'm gonna come in here to case packed products, continue to shipping plan. And it's asking me how many units per case and how many cases. So I'm gonna put 15 units per case, one case, continue. And then uh, basically we've already taken care of everything that we're supposed to here. Um, it's asking us for category for specific prep, which there isn't. This would be like if there was a, um, you know, a expiration date for food or something like that. We don't have to worry about it. And again, I'm just cruising through here really fast because we're going to get more into shipping and logistics later. This is just to show you how quick and simple the test process is. So, all right, they've assigned me a location, which is Chester, Virginia, to send these products to. You can change this shipment name here, and I'm going to change it to egg tray test, nice and simple, approve and continue. All right, and then work on shipment. And again, super, super simple here. It's going to be a small parcel delivery, UPS. Again, we'll get into all of this on a later episode, so I know I'm rushing through it, but the point of this episode is to show you how to set up the test, not actually set up a shipment. So shipment's going to be pack, packaged everything in one box. So all I have to do here is add in my uh, all of my packaging, put them all in one box, check my box weight. I'm actually just going to use a recycled Amazon box. We keep a bunch of these laying around here. And I'm going to go ahead and get these things prepped. I'm going to get them packaged. I'm going to enter the rest of the information. I'm going to set up my shipment. We're going to send them into Amazon. Again, I know we're rushing through this. That's the whole point. This episode is not about shipping. So the one thing to remember is I am rushing through this, but that's okay. We will in a later episode handle the shipping and logistics and setting up all those uh, processes. This episode is just showing you how easy it is to set up tests. I'm basically going to take these 15 items that I could have bought off of Etsy or somewhere like that get them shipped in so that we can run those test campaigns. No fancy packaging, nothing like that. When I actually ship these things and they become in route, so they're going to Amazon. Remember, I'm gonna call Bradley up. We're gonna remove that number one picture to intentionally suppress this listing, which will allow the rest of these goods to be distributed without actually becoming for sale because we don't want that. Once all the goods become distributed, I'll get on the phone with Bradley again. We're going to pop that picture in and we're going to be off to the races with our PPC campaign, and then we'll start analyzing data after it runs for a while. So I'm gonna finish packaging and shipping these in, and then we'll uh, see how long it takes to get there. All right, we're back here in the Helium 10 offices wrapping up episode five of the Project X case study. Now you just saw some time ago, actually, when I was back in my office packaging those products, wanna make a couple notes that you don't forget. 
Remember, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be really complicated. It can be extremely simple. We're just putting products in Amazon. And I know a lot of you probably watching that segment of this episode were a little bit confused why I didn't get too deeply into the packaging and things like that. It's because all that matters is that we got the data, which now we have. These campaigns that we set up and ran um, spit out some really cool, interesting information for us. And we're going to start tackling, kind of deciphering that in this process to figure out if we like these products and if these products could potentially be good for us to launch as private label items. All right. So uh, we're here on the um, on the campaign page. And let's just talk about what we're looking at here. What is this? Yeah, so these are different campaigns that we launched for the three different products that we're testing, but also three different types of campaigns. And we're not going to get too deeply into all of them, but we're going to kind of, which ones do you want to look at? Let's look at uh, a couple different ones. Uh, First of all, I'm looking at this. How did you get 108,000 impressions on this Axe campaign? That's insane. It's insane. That means there's a lot of search volume. You also see we spent a ton of money trying to gather that data. So remember the whole premise of these PPC campaigns is to look primarily at impressions and cost per click, right? The impressions telling us that there is search volume, the cost per click telling us a general idea of, you know, how competitive these keywords are. Now, if you're looking at this screen right now, this doesn't really tell us anything because when we set these campaigns up and you remember watching us set these up, we set these up for specific keywords and this is general. So what we have to do now is go back into these exact campaigns and, and look at the very specific keywords. So you asked about the axes. Let's go to axes. Let's go ahead and click that. And remember, you can organize these uh, as many different ways as you want to. We just did it very simply. Uh, you can organize it however is best for you. Click this axe test again. And then you're going to go to the top of the screen and you're going to hit targeting. And you've seen us do this before. This is where we entered our keywords. And these are the different keywords. Remember, we used Frankenstein to kind of organize these in our listing, and then we copy and pasted them here. So here's the different keywords that we ran. Now, if you look at our bid, you remember we bid high so that we wouldn't get outbid. But look here at impressions. Impressions is essentially, it's not an exact science, but how many times our ads popped up, right? And the ads pop up for a number of reasons. The main one being that Amazon decided to show our ad based on relevancy. And we're going to talk about relevancy here in just a second. Relevancy can be determined when you set up your ad based on the type of ad, whether it's phrase, broad, or exact. And we'll actually talk a lot more about that in our launch episodes and our optimization episodes. But generally speaking, we can see that the keyword camp acts got around 21,000 impressions in this point of time. And this was only about a two week test. That means there's a lot of people typing camp acts. We can see that hatchet, the second one from the bottom, we knew that that was the highest search volume based on magnet and cerebro data that we already pulled up. And look at the number of impressions there, 61,000. That's a lot of impressions, a whole lot of impressions. And if you look at uh, like camping axes, the third one from the top, you see we have impressions. It's a lower number, meaning less people search, search for camping axes. There is no cost per click because nobody actually clicked that ad. So remember I said we want one person to at least click on it to give us that cost per click information. So as we're looking at this, this gives us basically a few general pieces of knowledge. We know that hatchet is a really, really popular keyword. We know that camp acts is the second most popular. And then we get into some of these longer tail keywords that um, you know, we may try to attack for different reasons or we may try to rank on. But all in all, this set of keywords that we have listed here here is our cost per click and our impressions. Well, one, one quick thing I want to, you know, some people out there might be thinking, wow, 108,000 in, in two weeks. Does that mean there is 108,000 searches for these keywords? And the answer is no, not necessarily. Because remember, an impression can come from different things in PPC. You know, you search for something. Uh, let's see, what was one of these right here? Uh, camp apps, all right? You type in camp apps. Now let's go ahead and do that right now in Amazon. And I'm going to show you guys how to count impressions. So we type in camp X, okay? So now let's say uh, this was our product right here or one of these SOG Tomahawks, right? That's one impression. An impression just happened. It resulted from one search. Now let's say I go in and I click on one of these random ones. Uh, this one, this I like blue axes, let's just say. Um, now this listing came up, but what happens is down here, take a look at what we see. 
there is that SOG, Camp Axe, that those both two ones. Now, how many searches just happened? Only one search, all right? But so far, we already have two impressions that came from that one search. And if I click back here, I'm not even sure about this, but right there, this might be another impression. Yeah, I think if, if you if refresh the page, yeah. yeah. And then I click this other Cold Steel Trail Boss. Now let's say that another SOG was down there. There it is again. There's already been four impressions that came from the search. However, uh, it's still very important to check these impressions because relatively speaking, this is gonna show us which ones are searched the most, but just don't look at that number specifically to try and say, oh, that must be 108,000 different people are searching for this keyword. That's not what's happening right here. Yeah, it's a little broader than that. So one thing that we need to note here is we don't care about our orders. We don't care about our sales. We don't care about our conversion rate because remember, we're not trying to sell the items because we have low inventory. We want to uh, just get information. So we're intentionally not trying to sell it. So don't be discouraged. A lot of times I'll actually go in and just eliminate these columns from being viewed to just show the impressions and cost per click to give me that idea. Now- I have a question. Okay. You said impressions, cost per click. Now. Cost per click, isn't this the suggested bid what Amazon is suggesting that your cost per click would be? Yeah, this is a really, really good point. So on this specific keyword, Camp Axe is this top one, Amazon is saying that the bid should be between 43 cents and $1.12. Don't trust this, all right? Don't trust this because you can see that our actual cost per click was a buck 52. That means that all these people that are saying, hey, you can gauge relative competitiveness based on the suggested bid, look, it's not true. 42,106, 136. This one says, one, top end 136, 130, that's pretty close, but still the suggested bid is only 68 cents. That's why it's so important I said we have to bid high. Mm -hmm. You have to bid high. Here's what would happen, is if our actual cost over here is $1.44, and we had stopped at 64 cents, we wouldn't have gotten these impressions, uh, at least not this number, because people would have outbid us, right? So ignore, uh, this suggested bid, just completely ignore that. Typically, you can bid between two and three dollars and outbid most people on most products. Super high end product, maybe a little different. So, one thing that I want to note is the camp axes or the axes had a whole lot of search volume compared to some of our other products, right? So, let's back back out and let's look at some of those other products and we'll make some notes. What we have kind of found to be true is that Amazon on a lower search volume item will start to lump some keywords together, okay? So if you look at what we've done here, we originally ran basically a coffin shelf, egg tray, and ax. This one, this is when we were showing you how to set the listings up and then we actually didn't run that ad. But if you'll notice up here, we have coffin duplicated. And that's because when we first ran our coffin test, we noticed that all of the impressions and information was just on this one keyword, coffin shelves, okay? Coffin shelves. And you can see and, that right here. You see how the other lines, it looks like, oh, there's no impressions, but then all of a sudden, coffin shelves had 4,500 impressions. So you, I believe you entered, a, you opened up a case. What's, yeah. what's the deal, Amazon? So I, I opened up a case and I have seen this before, but I just wanted to clarify, make sure I wasn't telling anybody inaccurately. And basically what happens is they started lumping all of these keywords together. So coffin shelf and coffin shelves, they lumped together. And they even took coffin decor and lumped them together. And I thought, that doesn't quite sound right, Amazon. So Bradley pulled up a actual report that we're gonna show you in a second. But keep in mind, the higher search volume items like the axes are going to have more information on that first page. You could get into a lower overall search volume product like these coffin shelves. We know they're not as popular as the axes. And the information here doesn't look quite as accurate. Don't panic, don't freak out, don't assume that people aren't searching coffin bookshelf or coffin shelf, which is a keyword that we were going to depend on some traffic from, right? And automatically get discouraged. Don't do that because there's a little more information here that we're about to show you, right? Um, but real, real quick, this is not to say that, hey, uh, just because it says zero impressions, it always did get impressions. Sometimes this is going to be accurate in that it didn't get impressions. And the reason it could be uh, if you open up a case on Amazon, they'll tell you that you're not even indexed. Like if you don't have those keywords in your listing, you can't go and make a campaign on it. Like if we didn't have coffin shelves in our listing, guess what? Most likely there's going to be zero results here. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in, a, in our episode on listing optimization. 
but we're going to show you how to use index checker from Helium 10 to make sure that you are even indexed for that word. Otherwise, you're not going to get any impressions. All right. And then let's go back to the egg tray and let's take a quick look at that one before we get into our deep dive report. All right, so we've got a little bit of a combination of the two things happening. Remember with coffin shelf, there was only one keyword that was actually giving us information. With the axes, there was a lot of keywords that was giving us information. So we see just a few impressions for things like egg holder wood and egg storage. Uh, we see a lot for egg tray, which we knew would be the most mm -hmm. broad and, and the largest search volume item. And we've got a few things for egg holder and some, some of the wooden items like wooden egg holder and wooden egg tray. You actually sold uh, one of these, $120? Look at the price of oh that. My God. Yeah, so even when you're not trying to sell, sometimes it accidentally happens. And did you notice when we had the coffin shelf pulled up, we had several sales on the coffin shelf as well. Um, in fact, you uh, when we were running this ad, you called me and, yeah. and you let me know that within like a day we were on page one position four yeah it was like page one position four for coffin shelves coffin shelves gothic decor it just happens right so what we're telling you actually works you can even rank uh even during these tests with these really high opportunity keywords so you've seen these these impressions in this cost per click number you've seen there's not a whole lot of stuff going on in some of these keywords uh let's let amazon tell us more information okay. so remember that we ran a lot of these campaigns under phrase match or broad match which gives amazon a little bit of kind of lateral ability mm -hmm. to add some keywords in there. Some of these we ran on exact and you saw it lumped them too close together and uh, didn't give us a lot of information. So you can play with the different broad and exact match. Generally, I like exact. Sometimes I'll lump them together. And what we have found on this report that we're about to pull up is even when we do exact match campaigns, Amazon still shows us, gives us impressions on other yeah. keywords. So let's pull this up. And so, you kind of navigate and explain this. Where you guys go to get these reports, and this is very important. This is something, I mean, this is the reason why you guys are doing this. So make sure you know where to go into the reports. It's right up here in this tab. So what you do here is you can go in and put the date range of your PPC campaign. So I'm just going to do last month. Don't do last or, month. No, last, do month to date. Let's do month to date. All right, month to date, and then create report, and then you download it right here. So let me go ahead and open up this one. And we can see here it's all together. Uh, I put a filter on here so I can easily go to one. Is there one that you wanted to check out first? Yeah, let's look at the coffin shell first because that was the one that in the Amazon dashboard basically told us there were no impressions for those keywords, which we knew wasn't necessarily accurate. Which which one? Uh, we, it looks like we have three campaigns here. We do it for the coffin. Yeah, all three of them? Yeah, you can do it for all three of them. It's fine. Okay. All right. So then we can see right here uh, this column F right here is the match type. So remember, there's three different kinds of match type campaigns you can do, phrase, exact, and broad. And now take a look, where was that one that we were looking at here that was crazy, how we saw, remember, what, let's, go, let's go back. Let's go back real quick. So uh, here we are uh, on the coffin shelf exact campaign, and it looks like only coffin shelves had any impressions at all, right? But we downloaded that report, take a look at what the report shows. Here, coffin shelf, which was not the, uh, over here, 1,615 impressions. But remember right here, coffin shelf, it says zero impressions, all right? So this is what Tim was talking about earlier. Just because it says zero impressions here does not mean necessarily that that keyword didn't get any impressions. Make sure to go to your advertising report and you can get on a detailed level and you can see that all of these words, or at least some of them were getting impressions. Yeah, so remember also that we had a pretty short list of six or seven keywords, but if you look at this list under the exact phrase or even the broad phase, so broad we had you know what six or seven keywords, mm -hmm. but look at all these keywords that were actually getting impressions. So when we set this to broad or phrase, we give Amazon a little little more lateral movement to do some exploring for us, where exact is a lot lower results, right? Because we were telling it exactly what keywords to run. So on broad, it was even doing some things like giving us impressions on that brand name. Remember the yeah. Sourpuss mm -hmm. brand name? And look, they gave us 404 impressions, wow. right? So when we add all of these up, we can start to get a pretty fair number of uh, idea of where a lot of these impressions are landing and that we can get some, some velocity going. Now, one thing to notice here, you see coffin shelf broad and coffin shelf exact. These two were actually running at the same time and competing. 
So we got 1,615 on the exact and 400 on the broad. So we can add those together and say that in the same period of time, because we're running the exact same period of time, that you know we were getting more. So you could even add coffin shelf if it were up here as well in the in the phrase match campaign. So long story short, don't just open up your campaign manager, look at that information. You've got to actually download this report and see where your impressions were coming in. You've got to actually look at your exact cost per click, right? That cost per click is really important information. A lot of these, you know, coffin shelf small, we know that's not going to be a very competitive keyword. 181 searches. Would you like to be number one page results 181 times on a very, very specific keyword? Yeah. And look at that click-through rate on that. That's a 6% 12 out of the 181 yeah. compared to coffin shelf large, which was only 13 out of 366. So it was a 3%. So even looking at this, guys, there's so much information here. So now I know like, hey, I need to maybe optimize my listing a little bit more towards the people looking for the smaller you know, shelves. So I got to make sure I'm going to have that keyword in there. But there's just so much great information you can get from these reports. And remember, look at these costs per click. Look how cheap this is. Remember this item that we were looking at originally kept selling out and it was listed for like $35 plus shipping, merchant fulfilled. And when we add up all these impressions and then we look at you know the search volume that like Magnet and Cerebro give us, we know that there are thousands of searches for this exact product a month. And it's not competitive. Most of these bids are super cheap. If you've played around in the Amazon space and messed with PPC a lot, you're probably shocked at how low these numbers are because this is pretty unusual to see the numbers these low. But it just shows us that there are riches in the niches. I actually hate that expression, but it makes sense, right? <laughs> i never heard that there, before. There are riches in the niches because when we dig down deep and find these niche product opportunities, they are extremely easy to rank as we found accidentally even on our test. We weren't even launching this product. We were ranking like position number three. We know we're getting search results based on our Helium 10 search volume calculators and then also the impressions number here, we know that it's cheap. I mean, this is this is like an exciting thing that we're seeing here. It is. So look. do you want to take a look at the egg trays now on the same report? Yes, I do. Now, egg trays, the reason why uh, I want to look at that too is because this is a little bit different. You know, our main keyword probably is going to be coffin shelf or, or something, a derivative of that. But now with egg trays, it's a little bit different where egg tray or egg trays or egg holder, I'm sure, will probably have uh, the wider search volume, as we saw from Magnet and Cerebro, but um, you know the actual keyword that is specific to our product is more. We'll probably have the word wooden or rustic or, or something like that. But let's take a look if the uh, PPC report shows that. All right, so here we go. We've got the egg tray test. Looks like overall we had eighteen thousand impressions, so we should have a lot of really good data here. Click on this campaign and let's go to targeting next and let's take a look all right what, what does this what explain to everybody what we're looking at right here and what we can get from this information yeah so remember we have to actually go to the excel download or the csv download to get this exact information but still we know that the keyword egg tray carries a lot of volume right we also know that the keyword egg tray is the broadest and most competitive on Amazon. So where we were accidentally ranking on page one for coffin shelf, because it's a lesser known item, lower volume, that's easy. But on a product like egg tray, we're going to look at this information and understand that we might attack things a little bit differently, right? And we'll talk more about that in the launch phase, assuming that we go through with this product. So as we pull this up, remember that in the Amazon Seller Central dashboard, we saw that there were only a few keywords getting impressions and even some of those had very low numbers. But when we actually look at this downloadable report, we see that the impression numbers are much higher. We also see that we were getting impressions on keywords that we didn't even index for or put into our test campaign. So like the deviled egg trays, we know there's a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. um, Tupperware egg trays. But we do see that we're getting some results for wood egg tray, wooden egg holder, wooden egg tray. but but it's not very high. And we knew that would probably be the case mm -hmm. going into this because with the coffin shelves, we're just attacking coffin shelf and coffin shelves and those obvious keywords that we can rank on really fast. We know that if we're going to sell these wooden egg trays, we need to get you know a little bit of search volume going on the wooden version, but it's probably gonna be a little bit harder to attack this niche mm -hmm. unless we can actually get some page results on egg tray. Now, why do we think that's important? Because remember we went to Pinterest and we saw that 
we type in egg tray on Pinterest, everybody's interested and they're giving good feedback on the wooden ones. So eventually we have to land there. But we also can see here that the cost per click on egg tray is a little bit more expensive than like the coffin shelves, 119, it's not too bad. Um, surprised to see the egg tray for camping is almost $2 a click. That's interesting, I would have never guessed that. But still we see that, uh, that there's enough impressions here with egg holder and egg tray. We add all these things up that we can definitely start trying to rank and target for five or six of these keywords and I think have some decent search volume. Yep, I mean, and you're always gonna come up with some strange words that maybe you didn't know that you had in your listing, but there's some that you're gonna know right away we didn't put, like, look at this, this is a brand name right here, Tupperware, egg tray, you know? Uh, when you do a phrase or a broad or an auto campaign, Amazon will show you for other things that you are not even indexed for, all right? So uh, if you're doing a manual exact campaign, uh, Amazon is not going to put other brand names here, but like Mariposa Egg Tray. I don't know why in the world that's a search term. Mariposa means butterfly in English, that's Spanish. So somehow there was one person who searched for butterfly egg tray in Spanish and they clicked on it because they, <laughs> I don't know, it, it was exactly what they were looking for. Did we, did, we, did we sell anything? No, it doesn't say we sold anything on it. Uh, yeah, we didn't sell anything on it, but hey, you're going to find different things like that. And um, we'll show you later on how to actually look in your competitors' listings for keywords that they are converting for PPC on that they don't even have in their listing. And we'll explain why that's important. But there's some great information. I see what, it, like, what we can see is kind of predictable. Uh, the the click-through rates are very low on some of these, you know, like just like egg trays, less than 1%. But the ones that are about wooden egg trays, it's, it's like four or five times higher uh, like this one's at 8% click-through rate. And we saw that on the coffin shelves. And remember, that's a little bit different. The coffin shelves, our main keywords are probably just coffin shelves, you know. But here, some of the higher volume keywords are egg trays. But in the beginning, we can't expect to have some crazy kinds of conversion on egg trays, just the general keywords. But the specific keywords, it looks like our performance is pretty good. So if you're a little bit confused now, that's okay. What's happened is we're, we're compiling a lot of information where we started with these past two episodes and we're talking about just looking at impressions and clicks. That's very important. But now we're also starting to take this data and be thinking about product development. We're thinking about potential launch strategies. So as we continue down this trail of getting information, there's a lot of different ways we can use it. And I think that as we walk you through this whole process, you're going to see how one piece of information is applicable to you know one certain decision now but that same information can be applicable to a different decision or different step in the process later, being things like actually launching. So we have enough data here that if we choose any of these products to launch, we know which keywords that mm -hmm. we're actually going to target heavily on our listing. We know which uh, search result pages we're going to target. We know which keywords we're gonna target in our PPC campaigns, right? So this isn't just a test, this is also beginning of information gathering for potential launch, potential product development later. All right, so guys, we've shown you some awesome ways to set up your test PPC campaigns to get good data. And I, I would say for 99% of you, you probably never even thought about this. Even if you've been selling for a while, setting up a test listing and doing test PPC might be a new concept, but I hope you can see from this example that we gave how valuable this information is. Because as Tim said, it's not just to get PPC click information, but this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna use this information to like how we make our listing, our launch strategy, et cetera. So really great data here um, that we wanna use. So as we're looking at this information, Bradley, I know that we've got a few different types of products between the egg trays, the axes, and the coffin shelf, different types of data and different results showing up. But now we're in a position where we need to decide which of these products that we want to actually move forward with. And I think that you're on the same page with me. I think that we're gonna move forward on all of them. The reason being, it's going to allow us to show you different ways to launch different products like the coffin shelves, which should be fairly easy to rank on, extremely low co uh, competition, and more competitive things like the egg trays where we might have to take two-step launch approaches, and we'll talk about that type of thing. So for all intents and purposes, I think we have enough information here to know that these are not very competitive items and that there is actual search volume on this, and that search volume is not all relegated to just one keyword, it's kind of spread. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to review the show notes, don't forget to go to helium10.com forward slash x5. That's helium10.com forward slash x5. Uh, in the meantime, you can uh, hit us up in the Facebook group, Helium 10 Users on Facebook. 
Now, what are we going to talk about in the next episode, Tim? Yeah, the next episode, we're actually going to talk about sourcing. So if we're going to take these three products and try to get them produced, we're going to talk about reaching out to suppliers, uh, how to negotiate with suppliers. We're going to talk about when we actually reach out to these suppliers, what design elements are we going to take that we want to incorporate into our actual product? So we're probably going to look at some competitors. We're probably going to look at some additional reference information, like we might go back to some of these social media sites and places like that to try to get some inspiration exactly how we're going to produce these items. We're going to talk about RFQs, the acronym RFQ. And by the end of next episode, hopefully we'll have a game plan for actually sourcing these three items to try to bring them to the market. So I know that we need to ask a question, right? And when you go to answer this question, you can put it in the show notes. You can also ask us in the AMA. The question I think we need to pose is, what is the most interesting thing that you have seen in these search results, right? So looking at these search results with us, you've seen some other keywords pop up. Uh, I've seen some things that were interesting to me, like I would have had no idea that deviled egg trays were so popular, right? So tell us in the show notes or on the AMA this Friday, what you think some of the most interesting information that you saw just on this data that Amazon gave us is. All right, guys, so make sure to hit subscribe here if you haven't done so right here on YouTube so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you on episode six of Project X.